Welcome to my channel. This is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John, and today I'm doing a new uh, ranking video, ranking the albums of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. But before I begin, if you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I do rock and metal reviews, uh, rankings, and more. So the Red Hot Chili Peppers, this is a band I've been listening to pretty much since like the 80s. It's could be like one of my favorite like non-heavy metal bands. Uh, I'm a real big fan of this band and uh, I recently did a video with uh, Brian from AYBL Maine. We talked about our top 10 songs so I thought if I did that video and I just listened, been listened to all these albums it would be a great idea to do a ranking so I'm not gonna waste any more time. I have 11 albums to cover so I'm not gonna just jumping right into it. So let me uh, start. So coming at number 11 is uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, their self-titled debut from 1984. So this one has uh, Anthony Nikitas and Flea, you know, as all the albums, and does have uh, one of their early guitarists called Jack Sherman, and one of the early drummers uh, called uh, Cliff Martinez, it was produced by Andy Gill. This has a completely different sound, and I do have rank it last. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just my least favorite. It's funk rock and rap rock. It does have a sound uh, reminiscent of that, like 80s, like rap. It has like a very raw sound. Um, the lead single, Get Up and Jump, has a very like uh, funk sound, has like horns. The vocals do sound like 80s rap, and Out in LA is another uh, funk rock song. From that album you know there were like a lot of like shorter songs on this album it's okay but it was just was them like they haven't really found their sound yet now coming in number 10 i have one of their like more recent albums called i'm with you and this was produced by rick rubin this one has josh klinghoffer on guitar anthony nikitas on vocals flea on bass and chad smith on drums now on this album, uh, they do start to change their musical direction a little bit. It's still funk rock, but they're going to more of like a pop direction. They have a kind of a moderate hit with the adventures of Raindance Maggie. And this one does sound a little bit like their 90s and 2000s style. I thought that was pretty cool. Another song, Did I Let You Know? A little uh, faster paced song. And this one has some more like melodic singing and it kind of has like a bossa nova beat. And this was actually a really big hit in the country of Brazil. I know they recorded like a music video. Um, this is not a bad album. I think it's just like their later albums were a little weaker, which kind of brings me to my number nine pick, The Getaway from 2016. I think this one was a little better than um, the one from 2011. It is the most recent album. And this was actually produced by Danger Mouse, you know. He replaced uh, Rick Rubin after like 25 years of producing their albums. So it did bring a little different like sound to it, a little kind of more of like a modern pop sound, a little bit of like electronics. But I do think this one was a little better than the one before it. I did mention one of the songs in my top 10 songs called Detroit. I liked it a lot because they do mention like the city of Detroit. They talk about the Stooges and I thought that was a really good song. So I did list that in my top 10. But... Otherwise, there are some pretty good uh, songs on it. Dark Necessities, that's probably the biggest hit. The funk song, it's a cool bass line, a piano, kind of more representative of their modern sound. Another song called Go Robot. This one kind of had like a disco beat. It was kind of a little more upbeat. Had more of a modern pop sound, some electronic elements. And like I said, this was a pretty good album, but the other ones are a lot better. At number eight, we have Freaky Styley from 1985. This is their second album. Has a new guitarist called Hillel Slovak. He played on a few albums. And this was produced by George Clinton. He's from Parliament Funkadelic, and because of that, this is a very, like, funk album. I mean, has kind of like a punk rock edge, too, and a little bit of psychedelic rock as well. Has a lead single called Jungle Man. It's just straightforward, like, funk. Antetokitis, kind of starting to develop his vocal style, a um, little more singing, kind of more of a memorable chorus. Another single is called uh, Hollywood Africa, and this one is more of like a smooth uh, singing funk, has some horns, and um, kind of more in the style of like Parliament Funkadelic. You know, like I said, George Clinton was the producer, and 
This is a good album. Um, you know, uh, in my video I did with Brian, we talked about how, like, their albums from the 80s decade, like, they were a completely, like, different band. And then in the 90s, they kind of, like, turned into a kind of different type of band. But this is from the 80s period, very, like, fast beat, uh, upbeat, a lot of, like, funk, a lot of horns, and it's a pretty good one. So going into number seven is the Uplift Mofo Party Plan from 1987. This was produced by Michael Beinhorn, and he was a producer. He did albums by Hole, Soundgarden, Violent Femmes, and a few others. This one had that same funk rock and kind of like a, almost like a metal sound. Same lineup with uh, Anthony Dikitas, Flea, Hillel Slovak, and Jack Irons on drum. They do a cover of the Bob Dylan song called Subterranean Homesick Blues. One of my favorite songs called Fight Like a Brave, kind of like a rap rock song as I'm like heavy guitars. The most uh, recognizable song is Behind the Sun. It was like re-released as a single for their What Hits album in the early 90s. Just a very like laid back, like relaxing, kind of like makes you think of like Venice Beach in California, just hanging out, just chilling on the beach. That's kind of like what this song evokes. But this is a, a very good album from their like 80s period. Yeah. Now um, I'm up to the top six and these are all pretty much really good albums from here on in. So at number six is By The Way from 2002. This is a, a Rick Rubin produced album. The classic lineup of Anthony Vakitas, Flea, John Frusciante, and Chad Smith. Really good alternative rock album, had a few hits. Um, so one hit called Universally Speaking, really upbeat alternative rock song, had a similar sound to that like Californication sound, I will talk about that later. Has a um, pretty cool like clean guitar chords, hard driving drum beat. Another song called I Could Die For You, a little more of a laid back ballad with some clean guitars. Really cool bass line in that one. This is very representative of their like 90s and 2000s sound. And the biggest hit was called Can't Stop. And it's just class, that's that like classic funk rock, kind of a throwback to almost their like early 90s or maybe even 80s sound. That song is instantly recognizable. It was a big hit. So if you heard it, you would know exactly what it was. Coming in at number five is One Hot Minute from 1995. This is an album a lot of people don't like, but another Rick Rubin produced um, album. And this one actually has Dave Navarro, who replaced John Frusciante for one album. This have a few great songs, a little bit filler, but the, the great songs are like really good. So the best song is uh, My Friends. Really great acoustic intro, really great vocal performance in this one. Probably one of my favorite songs. It does have a sound similar to like Blood Sugar or Sex Magic. Um, you know, in my video I, I was talking about with Brian that this might have been like left over from, from those sessions. It does have that same sound. Um, another big song is called Airplane. Um, pretty cool song. This one uh, does have like uh, Flea's daughter who was like in kindergarten at the time and her class was singing like the last verse, which is a pretty cool little um, bit of trivia. And one of her deep cuts is called Tear Jerker, a tribute to Kurt Cobain. Kind of slow, laid back, alternative rock song. Has lots of grunge undertones. So this is a very good album. It has some really great songs, you know, a couple okay songs. But now I'm into the top five, actually, no, that was, no, that was number five, so I'm in the top four. Uh, number four is uh, Stadium Arcadium. Rick Rubin produced and uh, John Frusciante, he, uh, he's back in the mix with this one. This is a double album, it's like really long, one hour and 22 minutes. And it's good, and you have four double albums, there's a lot of good songs, not like too much filler. The most uh, recognizable song could be Snow, you know, it has a pretty cool guitar riff. Kind of has a little bit of that like uh, rap style vocals and some melodic singing. Has Danny California. This is a, a fictional character who uh, we do hear like throughout their different albums. Um, very like bouncy alternative rock song. They talk about their home state. Um, they do mention like different uh, states uh, and has like a pretty cool rap rock style. And another song, Tell Me Baby, kind of has a pretty soft intro, but. This is a little more of like an upbeat, uh, more reminiscent of their early like funk rock, almost a throwback to their like 80s uh, albums a little bit. So 
The stadium arcade was just filled with songs. It's a very long album. It just take me forever to talk about it. Now the top three. This was the biggest thing I struggled with. I these three albums are awesome albums. They're almost interchangeable. Really had a hard time uh, placing these ones, but my number three would be Mother's Milk from 1989. Probably their best album from their 80s period, back when they were more of like a funk and rock and like a rap metal group. Uh, Produced by Michael Beinhorn, who I spoke of him before. They do a cover of Stevie Wonder's High Ground. Um, really great song. They kind of like made it their own. They did Knock Me Down, really upbeat funk song, and some heavy guitars, really memorable chorus. Um, you know, to talk about, you know, if you see me getting high, if you see me, or something like that, and you know, knock me down. It could be about heroin, or it could be like just like being like too, like letting the fame get to you. Different ways to interpret that. Um, the song I like, uh, Nobody Weird Like Me. Just a really crazy, crazy bass intro. Uh, probably one of their like, heaviest and fastest songs. Um, and Mother's Milk is the album that probably would ap appeal to like the metal head. So if you do like metal music, you might like this. It's not a metal album, but it would appeal if you are a metal fan. Coming in at number two is Blood Sugar Sex Magic. This one came out in 1991. Rick Rubin produced uh, with John Frusciante, the classic lineup. This one has all of the hits. The biggest hit, uh, Under the Bridge, shame we all know that one. Give It Away, that was a really another big hit on MTV. Uh, Suck My Kiss, that was really another one. Uh, Breaking the Girl, really cool uh, acoustic gu uh, guitars on that one. Really very melodic, really great singing. And if you have to ask, pretty cool. Kind of like a throwback to the like funk sound again. A uh, deep cut that uh, actually Brian and I were talking about in our video called I Could Have Lied. It's a very laid back acoustic track and uh, really um, interesting uh, lyrical theme. Uh, so uh, please refer to that uh, video if you want to hear us talk about that. A really great song. And this one came out in the middle of that like grunge and alternative rock, rock explosion. Came out on September 24th, 1991. I, I really need to do an anniversary of this when September rolls around because there were a lot of albums that came out around this time. It was um, Pearl Jam's 10, Soundgarden's Bad Motorfinger, Nirvana's uh, Nevermind. A lot of grunge came out at this time and it's kind of mixed with in that whole grunge movement. I don't really think it's a grunge album, but it's just kind of mixed in that whole uh, scene. So my number one is Californication. 1999 Rick Rubin album um, has John Frusciante replacing Dave Navarro on this one. This one, uh, pretty much the first seven songs, don't like a greatest hits album. We got Scar Tissue, we have Around the World, we have Other Side, Californication. We have Road Trippin', that was actually the last song. Really cool, like uh, acoustic finger picked song, really. The kind of song you just like makes you like kind of like just sit back and chill. Really great song. Parallel Universe, that's another great song. Really great, like distorted. I think it's like a distorted bass using that one. And my favorite deep cut is called Easily. Just a really like infectious, like vocal uh, delivery on this uh, song. It's a really great deep cut, so I recommend you uh, look up this one. So this one does have uh, the signature like 90s to 2000 sound. There's not really a lot of funk on it, not really a lot of rap. More of their like melodic rock or m melodic alternative rock, and that's why it was a really big hit. I think it actually sold less than Blood Sugar Sex Magic, but this is just a great album start to finish. So that's it. Let me know what you thought of my ranking. What would you have higher? What would you have lower? And if you want to give your ranking in the comments section, I would appreciate that. And we could all uh, talk about that. I think it would be pretty cool. So. That's it, so today's Thursday. Um, coming up this week, and I have a couple of new releases. So I believe a new album by Power Wolf is coming out that is uh, European Power Metal. Not one of my favorite uh, metal subgenres, but I'll give it a listen and I'll probably give it a review. So I'll stick around, check out my in video links. I will link my top 10 Red Hot Chili Peppers album. Uh, that video I've been talking about this whole uh, ranking, I'll link that and I'll, I'll link another thing. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.